Good afternoon. Obviously, you can see that I'm still at home, uh, still without a, a vehicle at the moment, which hopefully will be getting sorted within this next uh, next seven days. So what I'm going to do today is show you how I make my PVA bags. I know everybody's seen them made um, plenty of times. There's loads of videos on YouTube. My ones are for a bit of a slight of a difference. Um, I'm not going to be using lead. Um, I'm going to be using something a bit different. And when I show you, you'll see what I mean. So th this, I'll, I'll explain more when I'm actually making the bag, why I use this and where I where I use it. Okay. So without further ado, I'll take some photos, which I'll insert now and show you what I mean. So as you can see, there's two weights there. One is a Stons from uh, Palatrax, which as you can see, looks like a stone. That's it. And then obviously your standard two ounce lead, which I showed you when I was making the leaders anyway. Now, with the stons, um, the towel bag rubbers that I use from Corda um, fit in lovely. As you can see, you can't see any towel rubber by the ring there, but it comes away very, very easy. Okay, so if I'm fishing out in open water, um, I generally use um, a two ounce, two to three ounce lead in my bags. If I'm fishing in a, a shallower margin or maybe the water's a little bit clearer um, and obviously the, the fish are sight feeding, I would generally use a Stons. Um, the reason being, it doesn't look out of place on, on the deck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a rig up first of all, um, show you what I do with that. Um, and then I'm gonna make a, a solid bag with a stand in it. Quite simple. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll show you that as in a second. So as you can see, these are your two components for making a solid bag, basic solid bag rig. I've got the ESP Como Sync Link in 20 pounds. Obviously, depending on the water you're fishing, whether it's got to be barbless or not, depends on your hook pattern. You can use your favourite hook pattern. I, Because I'm using smaller baits, um, which I'll show you in a second, I like a slightly smaller hook, but the crank I find goes in nice and it stays. Um, the hook holds with that is very, very good. So all I do, first of all, I don't know how long that is, that may be 10 inches, maybe 12, not quite sure. But I'll snip that off there. And then I make myself a little overhand knot your bait stop to go through Because I am using smaller baits, I don't want the loop to be too big. I want the the knot to end up in the bait. It just helps keep it in place. Right, just tighten that up. Nice and tight. Obviously, trim your, 
trim your tag end off. So you can put your bait on first of all, or if you know how big a hair that you need, you can do it off your eye. So I'm gonna be using, in fact, I'll put the, my bait on first. So I'm gonna be using um, a Bonoffi high impact balanced waffer from mainline. If I've up, up the hook size, uh, because I use, I do also use, if I can find, find the packet. I also use in my bags, the size four cryogen from ESP. If I'm gonna use one of these, I do up my hook size. Obviously they're only a 12 mil, so size eight works well with that. I will then opt for a 14 mil. Um, these are the ones that I've been doing using on my bottom bait fishing as well and I'm doing really well at the moment so I'm not going to change something that works. So obviously this one's going to be one of these small wafters. So I'll get that now. A good old generic bait stop. I'm not going to talk to you about those because everybody uses bait stops and they know what they are. As you can see, that knot is going to end up just inside the bait. when I pull it back through. Get me bait stop him. Pull it down, nice, nice and tight. So you go through the back of the eye first of all. This is where you can decide how high you want it off the floor, off the off the lake bed, or whether you want it tight. I generally, as a rule of thumb, have it just so it's touching the the bend of the hook. Because when I finish whipping my knot, it's going to be standing just on really it'll be opposite the the um, barb of a hook, roughly, if it had a barb. So that's roughly where I want it. Just have a look, see where the, not the join is. And I start whipping away from the join on the hook. Just keep whipping all the way up. I want to finish just past the point. And I'll do two turns coming back down. I'll pass that back through the eye of the hook. Put it nice and tight. As you can see, it's just coming off the back of the eye there, off the, off the back of the shank even, sorry. But as that sits, it's going to be sitting literally opposite the, as it goes up, it should sit just opposite 
where the barb generally is. So as it goes up, there's a good, good bit of free movement there for the bait. Now, I don't like my bag rigs to be massively long. I don't need I would say and just do a figure of eight knot oh, keep losing the tag end You like me and it gets a, a little bit fiddly just use your baiting needle just pull it through you can tease it down there you go just get something to Tighten the knot, like so. I would say that's three inches, roughly, maybe shorter, but that's gonna call Constantina into the bag nice and neat. Right. So we can trim that off a little bit. There we go. There's the finished rig, as you can see. Not very long, but not too short either. Um, I, don't, I like using the 20 pound when I'm using a short hook link. It gives me a bit of uh, confidence in my rig. So once we've done that, we get the, the leader. As long as I've done this loop long enough, I should be able to feed my bait through. See it go through. I'm not worried about breaking the skin on it. Because I'll show you what I'll do in a second anyway. There we go. So once I've looped to loop onto the ring, just pull it down so it's properly done. Oh, see how, you see how easy that comes out. So what I do then, just to break the skin on it, just trim round, not a lot, because it'll still be popped up a little bit. But I know with these baits and this hook, size hook, I do need to trim just to tad off the edges. Just basically turn it into a barrel shape so it doesn't look as round because obviously the bits that I'll be putting in my bag in a minute they're not circular like this one so I know that that's going to sit there just above just above the hook with the hook laying down now I've never I've not used a pop-up in solid bags before um, but I'm going to give that a try this this year. Um, so that's that. That's that part done. Um, I'll just get the uh, bags that I use now. So the bags that I use are the Fox 
fast melt rapid load system. Now, these are the 55 by 120 bags that I use. It comes with a loading tool and a locking collar, which I'll show you how to use these in a second. This loading tool and locking collar though, also fits the 60 by 130 bags. So it, that, that, it doesn't matter which bag size that you end up with. If you want one slightly bigger, you can do that. So they're the bags. So the mix that I use is the mainline P Spod and PVA pellet mix. It's the, the reason I use that. It's got load, loads of different size. It's got a few different sizes, um, and obviously different breakdown rates for the bags um, or for the pellets. So, get my rig. Sometimes the bags are a little bit difficult to open, so I've already got that ready. So all I do is stretch it a little bit. Get the locking collar on, like so. Just keeps it compressed, so you can get the the PVA bag on the loading tool. And all you do is just slide, slide the locking collar off, get that out of the way. Now push the push the bag up. I like to have the, the groove either on, on the back, not against one of the seams. I just something I find it's easier. So as you can see, it's got a groove here, which I'll show you that, that just helps keep the leader out of the way. So first thing I do, get me bag, bag mix. Now if you've got a preferred thing to use, by all means, you know, you, you may use um, ground bait, um, liquids in your bags. You, you can pretty much use anything. The only thing that I wouldn't do, personally, is use whole baits. All right, as you can see, the stone does fit in the locking collar. Just, just need a little bit more pushing than most, like especially a two ounce lead, because obviously you saw the two ounce lead. So all I'm gonna do is just tap, get the hook positioned. And then just tap the bait so the bait and the hook go into the small amount of pellets that's already in there try and position it into the corner if you can try and get that over there we go there we go try and position the the hook so it's nice and flat Tap it down again. As you can see, I can then just hook the leader on the back of the locking collar. And then I just top it up with some more pellet. Some of the bigger pellets sometimes with, with these smaller bags of 55 to 120s when i'm using the stones you do need to just work the pellets down but they do go as you can see and i just 
Again, tap that down. And as I'm lifting the lead, or lifting the stone, the hook link is concertinaing, so it shouldn't tangle. You just get some small, smaller pellets now, which they fall past the, the stones really quick, really easy. Again, just work them down. As you can see, just tap that down. Okay, and then just want some on the top now. So it helps compress the bag when I tie it. I don't fill it right up because you because you don't need to. I would say that's maybe two thirds pellet. And then all you do with this collar, make sure you take your leader out of the groove. Because if you try and pull the collar, it's gonna pull your lead with it. Just slide it down a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but the, the towel rubber's still poking out. And all you do just twist it a couple of times. Get the leader out of the way. And then before you push it right over, just wet the bag that's still on the collar. And then you can basically just push it over. Right, so then just hold it in place for a bit. Right. There you go. That's how I do my bags. Now, as you can see, I've got smaller pellets in the corners because that way you want to try and compress the bag as much as possible. Obviously, with that stone. Um, it, the, the, this bag's a bit too small for the stones, to be honest. I should have used the neck size up, which would have made it a, a bit easier. But I'm not going to be casting these 10 rod length. It, this is going to be for a, a margin spot. So, obviously, nice and easy. If you want it a bit more aerodynamic, all you do is push the corners in. Give the corner a lick. These are really actually quite stretchy, so you can pull pull it over quite far. Just hold it down for a few seconds. And then what you want to do is do the, the other side, compact it down, lick and pull it over. Just hold it down again. And this side's not that great actually, I'll redo that. There you go. You still cast that 10 10 rod lengths quite easily because with the pellets in there and the stones, the stone the stones is about um, an ounce and a half. So it's not much difference in the a two ounce lead that I would generally use at eight to 10 wraps. If I was going out further than 10 wraps, I'd go up to maybe a three ounce lead. But there you go. And then that is it. Obviously, if you're using liquids, um, what I would suggest is just use 
something to poke a hole in, make it quite wide. So if you're using a bottle, um, I don't know. I, I, this is just the closest thing to hand, but I do have other liquids as well that I just, I've not really used much liquids in bags. One thing you need to do is make sure that they're PVA friendly to start with. Um, this is what I use for um, soaking some hook bait, but the, the nozzle on it, obviously what you need to do is just make sure that the nozzle can go in. And that's it. There's your, your solid bag. Obviously you attach it loop to loop. So you just on your main line, you just need to make sure that your uh, figure of eight loop knot that you've got to attach your leader to will go over the bag. If you'd make it too small, then obviously you're just gonna have to cut it off and re retie it. So that's how I make my bags. Um, that obviously, like I said, this one is gonna be just for in, in the margins where it's a bit shallower. Um, but it's just a bit of a, a different different thing um, with uh, a stons from Palatrax. Um, I'll stick a link, I'll stick the uh, web address on a photo in a minute and I'll post that up for you. And that's how I make my bags. I know everybody's, everybody's thinking they've seen this all before. Um, they've seen PVA bags before. But have you seen the stons before? That's the, that's the thing. Um, they come in all different shapes, um, different colours. Ring swivel as well, so you can use it on a lead clip. Um, they do all different sorts of tackle, um, terminal tackle and baits as well um, up on the Palatrax website. So have a look um and see what you think thanks very much for watching hopefully i will be my next video like i said in my last video will be a introduction to um, a lake that i've got a session booked on at the end of the month hopefully i will have my vehicle to be able to get down and do that this week so hope everybody enjoys their time on the bank and i'll see you soon